<clears throat> All right then. Before I take my dog out on a walk today, ooh, it's a little chilly out there. I have to warm up a little bit. I want to give you a quick little spiritual lesson, and this is talking about why you would need to cleanse your consciousness. So this is directly from the Christ letters, what I'm about to read to you, and then we'll talk. I'm going to make this real quick. So if you happen to have the Christ letters book, it's, it's called Christ Returns. Um, it's on page 208. Why should I cleanse my consciousness? Now, you would never plant a field of mealies. I don't even know what mealies are, so let's go with some type of vegetable. You would never plant a field of vegetables without first putting in the plow to turn the ground and then equipment to make a fine textured soil and scatter fertilizer. In ignorance, if you didn't do that, you could plant among at the existing weeds and in lumpy ground and omit the fertilizer and your crop would be thin and patchy. You wouldn't get the desired result. So it is when you muddle along in your earthly, self-centered thoughts and love entirely in your own human knowledge and live entirely in your own human knowledge, strength, and will. You're limited in everything that you do. And all unknowingly, you will create the very circumstances, circumstances which will limit the harvest of your endeavors. I understand this. So I had something come to me this morning. Um, this is about transformation, right? Transforming. So I had been very, very mad um, at my ex, blaming him for everything. And I, this morning, woke up with a newfound love. So I haven't felt any emotions, positive emotions for him for a very long time. And this morning I woke up with this soft, beautiful, gentle love. And I realized um, that all I, I um, have been putting my hell on him. And that's all that he had been doing to me was putting his, his hell on me. And so I immediately forgave. I realized it, it has nothing. And I mean, it couldn't be more far removed from myself. His own hell, my own hell, they're two separate things. They interact with each other when we allow them to, but now I understand it. And I felt this deep, soft love um, for him, wanting such good and wonderful things. I've already been told, I, I, I was told this quite some time ago, that he will become. Um, divinely enlightened at some point. I was never told when or where, but I was told that he will. Um, but I just want such good and wonderful things for him now, and I didn't before. I wanted him to suffer. I wanted him to have the hell that um, I believed he had put me through, which really I was just putting myself through, through my own ignorance. But this is what we do. So if your ego is in the way, meaning if you feel victimized in any way, in any circumstance, in any situation in your life, this knowledge will help you to change that. Each person is choosing and creating for themselves through their thoughts and the actions that they take. Um, they're choosing for themselves either heaven or hell. And some, a very good mix of the both, and some enough of the heavenly that when the hell sprinkles in there, they don't realize it has also been of their making. It's been about them. So what I came to realize, the conclusion that I've come to, and it includes um, all of the thoughts and the actions and the things that I have believed 
up until this point, I realized that it, maybe through my own ignorance, I created a reality that includes, included hell in it. Because I didn't believe before, I didn't have the knowledge and the understanding that it must not be this way. I understood when, you know, or I understand now when Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is within you, how he, how he expressly told us that, he told us that, he told us over and over, he told us the kingdom of heaven is within. But I understand it more fully now that it really is our thoughts. And it is through that maturity of mind, um, through our free will, choosing the consciousness thoughts which we allow into our lives because those create vibrations and frequencies um, which materialize um, in our physical reality. And so through this process of transformation, which this has been absolutely wonderful and I'm so thankful for all of the supportive people in my life, um, for my dad who just supports me and lets me come up here whenever I want. Um, for my mom, who is uh, driving my youngest daughter back and forth to teach swimming lessons four times a day, back and forth to the um, pool down in Missouri, to um, my children who just love and understand me and they know that I like to be alone and they don't ever complain about it, even though I'm sure like when my mom left, I wished that she was always around, but um, thank you to them and thank you to my um, ex who I, do, who I do love dearly, um, not in a sense that um, I would want to be together with him ever again, but in a deep, compassionate, truly understanding am way with real forgiveness um, and understanding and acceptance and forgiveness of myself my own ignorance to the fact that it wasn't personal it was um, and I'm just so thankful for all of the supportive people in my life that allow me to be in a place like this, um, to have a retreat. If you have never given yourself this gift of retreat, um, you know, you, you can come together with a group of people and do practices like I, I'm doing here and we can do this together as a group, but I, I would encourage you if you have the means and if you don't, then manifest them, create them, believe in them. Um, that you can be alone, um, right? There's nobody here, dude. I don't think. Um, Hamish, it's okay, but bring a dog, you know, because then you're not alone alone, um, and you have some protection, and that makes you feel really good. Um, maybe you could rent a dog if you don't have one. Is that a thing? Treat them like gold, that's all that I would say. Heavenly dogs. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry to sit that so loudly, kind of gross. Um, no, it's not. It's heavenly. Um, so, lesson for today, for this moment, for right now, before I leave for a walk, we're at 10 in the morning. I kind of slept in today. 8 30. <coughs> um, why you need to cleanse your consciousness. We, we learned about that. So make a list, go through what do I need to cleanse myself of. Um, I do have an assessment on my website that goes through some of the emotions. I'll make, an, I'll make another one, another list that you can look on um, to kind of give you some ideas or look in the Christ letters, you know, is there um, jealousy, is there hate, is there revenge, um, is there inner turmoil? Um, what what are these things? Um, angers, sadness, disappointment, frustration, um, 
victimization? Um, what are these things that you have that you that are keeping you separate from the divine? So imagine this. Okay, this is your soul on the inside of here. Now, in this hand, um, this is your ego. This is the I want, I don't want. Um, it's the it's the rejections and the acceptance. It's it's all of it. Now, um, on this side, um, this is the I want, I need, I. But it doesn't matter. The inside never changes. No, no matter what the ego is saying or wanting or needing or hoping for, this it remains the same. I don't know if that made any sense. So, when you take all these things like hateful, revenge, all of these things that aren't this, because none of them are this, this is just magnificent love. Um, when you take all these things that aren't this, then you're left with a this. And then you have a pure um, connection with the divine. It is just, it's there. It's just flowing. It's all the time. What do I need? Whatever the divine wants for me. And it's going to be what is best. It's going to be better than what you could ever dream up. Because you put limits on things when, when you want and when you wish for things. But the divine has no limits. Look around. Do you see limits? on the beauty that exists in the world? There's not. There's none. There aren't any. Um, who could think to grow such a beautiful flower and make its petals so unique and give it its own beautiful, sweet, unique fragrance that's unique to it and um, give it its own beautiful color or colors and its own feel and its own texture and its own purpose? You know, maybe that flower is a healing flower. Maybe it uh, keeps bugs away. There's, there's so many so many beautiful wonders to behold in our world um, and when you're on retreat you can get in touch and you can enjoy those things and you can get back because when you're living in the concrete jungle which of course there's nothing wrong with that if it's heavenly um, the earth can really assist you in connecting with the divine. So, if you haven't been on a retreat, if you haven't been alone, um, or with a group of people, maybe that's the easiest way to start out if you've never been alone and that's really intimidating or scary or it just sounds like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, maybe that's a good way to start is, is in a group um, of people who are seeking the same thing, you know, when they say we're more two or more of us come together, there I'm with them, and it's, um, it's so true. I used to do, um, well, I have done with my one friend, Wendy, I've told you about her before. <clears throat> she, uh, me and her would do healings together. We would kind of, we would do hypnotherapy together, but she would do part, I would do part, we would kind of, take over where the other one left off. Um, it's very healing because we work differently, even though, you know, you might do the same job as somebody else. Maybe you're a social worker or a counselor or something. You'd, you've learned the same school. You've done the same things, but it's you. It's your uniqueness. It's you um, that is the gift to that craft. Um, and nobody can teach you how to be you other than you. Um, you're your own creative teacher. There's certain things that you hear that you like and that you're like, oh, I'm going to do that now. And then those things work for you because you believe in them, because you've created those things to be heavenly. But you, you even know when you don't get the results you want, it began with you. It was your thinking. It was, oh, I don't know if this is going to help this person. I don't know if this is... And then it didn't. It was your belief. It was your faith or lack of faith. It was your doubt that led to that. Um, you know that. 
if you have self-awareness, you know that. So, next topic for the day, which we will do a little bit later on here. I'm going to heat back up this lukewarm coffee that I just poured in here. Now i got to heat up this cream. What am I doing? delicious though. It doesn't even matter. Okay, so what I was saying here before was, so I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to talk about faith and doubt later today. Um, if you have a list of things that you need to work on, actually write that list out. Or you can go to my site. Maybe you can print. I don't know that you can print that off. I'm going to make it into a Word or a PDF document so that you can actually print off um, that assessment because it will probably be very helpful for you. Um, but you could look at this assessment and, and everything must be pure gold on there. It must be all exactly, if you have cleansed um, what's going on in your mind, it should all look beautiful. And if it doesn't, if something's even up at a one or a two or a nine or an eight and should be up at the 10 or the zero, um, you'll understand what I mean if you go look at it. Um, write it down, write this down. Take it into meditation or prayer. Um, the difference here, so when I think of prayer, I think of you talking, asking, requesting, wanting. And then when I think of meditation, I think of you listening and waiting for the response. So you can do both. You can take it into prayer and, you know, ask divine, this is my intention that I will be relieved and cleansed of these things um, that are keeping me separated from the that I truly, deeply seek and want and need. Um, and then as you have that prayer sent out, then you can sit in meditation and wait as the divine cleanses these, gives you a mental cleanse, cleanses these things away from your consciousness so that you can be closer. And you will see, as you do this, as you set your intention, um, just to connect with the divine day after day as you do this as you keep doing this You'll see the changes begin to happen like even for myself how I went to sleep and now I woke up and I feel very different Than I did yesterday that um, and I've been working through the anger and the, and the, the resentment and, and all of those things with my ex this whole time and I thought that I was there, but I really truly see now because I hadn't felt that feeling of love for them. I had been um, rejecting it, resisting it. Not I had turned it off when I had found out the things that, and I, it had been off. And so all that was left was negative emotions. There was no love there um, that I could feel, which obviously there, there was, but I couldn't feel it. And I had turned it off, you know, to probably to protect myself. Um, but because those other emotions and my ego felt safer, right? If I felt that that softness of love, um, that that would have really changed things. It, and I feel as though, you know, it might have hurt me even more deeply. But I realize now with the understanding and the knowledge that I have, which is why it came to me exactly when it did, um, because it came hand in hand with realizing that people are choosing to live in heaven or they're choosing to live in hell and that has nothing to do with you. And so when I realized that, then that softness of love was safe to come back and to return to me um, so that I could, you know, have my thoughts and my actions and my feelings aligned in a, a heavenly and loving um, and accepting and caring way, which, you know, that knowledge is what needs um, to be accessible um, so that you can truly connect with the divine um, in a heavenly way. Because when we live in heaven on earth, um, everyone that we live with here, um, they're in our heaven as well. And so we have to accept them into our earthly heaven um, in a true and deep and heavenly there's no other way to put it. Having the knowledge that it's us that's creating the visible manifestations in our reality and our life in front of us. Um, so anyways, that's my message 
I don't know how long this was. I was hoping for it to be nice and quick, but you know me. Coffee's cold by now. Not that that takes that long, but it's still warm-ish. Um, anyways, I love you all. I'm not even going to say it because I don't even know if I will. But um, I will definitely at some point, not right now, I will return here today and I will get you out another meaningful message from my heart and my lips and my words, the words that I'm speaking to you, the truth. And I love you all. If you're here, if you have found me, um, then you were meant to find me just as I was meant to find you. I requested you to find me and you have. So thank you for being here. Um, and I will chat with you all. I'll speak some more words to you um, today, very soon.